You know, we are in the days of Hanukkah. I said yesterday in my lecture, a bombastic statement with lots of courage and uh, I don't know how I, was, how I was so brave to say it, but it's 100% the truth. I say, if, of course, nobody in the world can make a beep against the world of Chazal, the sages. No one has permission to modify, to change, to misinterpret, to ignore, and nevertheless to make fun at the words of Chazal. Gemara say, Ma'leig al divrei chachamim nidon betzoar otachat. Someone who makes fun, make bad comments against the words of the sages, they were holier, the holiest people in the history and the most knowledgeable people in the Torah. If he makes derogatory comments or make fun of the words, his end that he goes to a special place in hell, I don't even want to tell you what happens over there. The worst thing you can think of. The Gemara say, Unculus was a Roman goy. He was a nephew of Titus. The Roman Titus who destroyed the second temple in Jerusalem had a nephew. After Titus got killed, this nephew started to get involved in Judaism. Still was a guy, his name was Unculus, as you can see by the name. So he made a seance. Seance means calling souls and communicating with souls. There are different ways to do it. So he called Bilam the main prophet of the Goim. It's mentioned in the Torah in a few chapters, Bilam. And he asked him, who is important in heaven? Who is really the most important people in the world? I wanted to confirm if the Jews claim that they are the most important people in the world, if it's really real. <coughs> so Bilam told him, the nation of Israel is the most important nation in the world. So he asked him, what should I do? Should I stick to them? Should I convert? He said to them, ah, you won't be able to be a Jew. It's too difficult to be Jewish. It better you go against them and fight against them. At least God will make you someone important because this nation do does not fall in the hand of a loser. They usually fall in the hand of someone serious, like a big warrior or an empire. So if you go against them, you have a chance to become somebody important in this world. Same advice his uncle gave him. He brought Titus. He asked Bilam, what punishment you got? Because you went against them. So he told him his punishment. I don't want to even say it. It's disrespectful even to mention it. What was his end? And then they, they, he brought his uncle Titus. And Titus told him, I, I wrote in my will that they burned my body and spread it in seven different uh, uh, rivers, lakes, rivers. And that's exactly what they do to me. What I de declare that I want that my body will have, that's what they do to my body with my soul together. They burn me, I take my ashes, they spread it all over, which is horrible suffering. They collect now everything back into a body. Every day they burn me like this. This is my punishment. So I ask him, what should I do? Should I convert? He said to him, if you could become a Jew, maybe. But now you're not going to be able to. So you, the same advice like Bilami gave him. Then he called JC. JC. JC came, but JC died a Jew. He never started Christianity, like some people think. Christianity started between 70 and 200 years after he died. There's different opinions. But minimum 70 years after he died, which is already three generations right there. Which means the people who started Christianity never even saw his face. That's why I always wonder why they make this hippie face with the hair. <laughs> then nobody ever saw how he looks. If he, he, nobody even know if he existed. It could be a bunch of fairy tales. There's no testimony that JC even existed. I know what you want to say. You want to say why, but it's in Gemara. Right? That's what he wanted to say. So it's not, in, the Gemara is speaking about different JC. He lived 150 years in a different date. Most people don't pay attention. The Gemara speaks about someone wicked and his name was Yeshua. Yud Shin Vav Ayn. You, the real name we call him Yud Shin Vav, which is abbreviation of Imach Shemo Vezichro. 
But the Gemara speaks about one like that with his name that was, uh, he went with his rabbi, Rabbi Yoshua ben Farchia, and he said to him, Rabbi, look what the gorgeous women standing out there. <laughs> From all the people in the world, he walks with his holy rabbi, the Rosh Yeshiva. Imagine you walk with Rav Ovadia Yosef, Alav Shalom. You walk in Yerushalayim, in the streets, next to the western wall there in the old city, and then you see a bunch of beautiful lady standing there in the side, say, Rabbi, Rabbi, come, come, look what gorgeous women out there. <laughs> Wait for tomorrow, when you're with one of your friends. <laughs> Rabbi, come, come. So the Rabbi said, oh yeah? You cannot come tomorrow to the yeshiva. He kicked him out of the yeshiva. And uh, then later he came to, uh, to apologize, and the rabbi was in the middle of the prey, so he could not speak to him, got angry, thought he's ignoring him, and he went and rebelled against the rabbis. So based on that, some people wanted to say the Chachamim spoke about JC, JC from Christianity. But one way or the other, when JC came, he asked him who's important there, he told him the Jews. So he said, what should I do? Should I convert or should I go against them? So he said, yes, convert ask for their peace, love them, join them. So he said to him, but you, what was your end in heaven? What was your verdict? And he said, they put me in a place, it's like a pool, like a river, where all the waste of all the bathrooms goes there. And that's where I am. So he asked him, why you got such a punishment? He said, because I made fun at some of the words of the Chachamim. Rabbis, Sheneemar, JC told him, Amalig al Divrechachamim nidon betsoar otachat, in boiling waste. That's his punishment. So he said, said the Gemara said, come and see the difference between the wicked Gentiles to the wicked Jews. That the wicked Gentiles are in hell already. And he asked them, what should I do? Instead of telling him, yes, convert, enjoy them, don't make the mistake we made. They encourage him to go in the same path that they went, that his end will be like them. But JC, which did something wrong and he's paying for it right now, it wasn't like them. He said, join them, convert. That's the difference. He's, he's suffering just as much. But he said to him, don't make them. By the way, you should know that if you ever read the New Testament, you'll be very surprised because JC writes there to his followers, that they must respect the rabbis. They have to follow the verdicts and the rulings of the sages because this is his words in the New Testament. Because they sit on the chair of Moses. Moshe is the leader and the representative of God. And after he passed away, they sit on his chair, which means they continue the rulings instead of Moshe. That's why everyone must listen to them. The problem was that later he himself contradicted what he ordered his students. That he went against the, what the rabbis warned him not to do, and he ended up doing it anyway. And the end is history, the rest. So, so going, go, you know, going back to 